Which is the best solar panel of 2025? A great question. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down all the latest, greatest solar panels that are on the market. We're gonna be talking monofacials, bifacials, and what's even better is, I've got a new kid on the block, and I'm gonna be demonstrating it to you in a live product demo. Let's go. Earlier on in the year, we put a video together that's been incredibly successful, but that information is a little bit out of date. So I wanted to run you through all the latest solar panels that are in the market. So these two panels behind me here that look very similar to one another did feature on our earlier January video, but I feel like it's really important that we go through and have a recap so you have an understanding of what they are and how they work before I go on to the new kid. Let's recap on essentially what went on my house, which was a Jinko 420 watt N-type monofacial solar panel. Now it's important to acknowledge the fact that monofacial panels would typically go on an in-roof system or those looking for now the more budget version for an on-roof system. At one stage of the game, only nine months ago, this was your top spec panel. Things have really changed. This panel behind me is 420 watts, so that's the maximum output that we can get out of it. There's a lot of confusion around wattage, assuming that as soon as it goes into sunlight, it generates 420 watts worth of generation, which isn't the reality that goes behind it. That's the maximum output. It's then important to look at efficiency, how efficient that panel can process it. One of the things you'll notice about all the three panels in the shot is they're all exactly the same size. So that's 1762 millimeters high by 1134 wide, but they're all offering very different things and they all pack a different punch. So where would this be now most suitable? Earlier on, we said it was the highest performing panel. I would say this is for those maybe on a bit more of a budget now. These panels are really commoditized. The cost has come down of them and better versions are now out in the marketplace. Where would I use these? I would use these if I've got a lower budget, I'm thinking of just return on investment. So maybe I'm a newly retired couple and I'm thinking, I want to deploy some capital. I don't necessarily want the fanciest one out there. Not everybody wants the new iPhone. Some people kind of just go, I'm quite happy with the SE. This is that version here. It does what it says on the tin. It gives you generation and it still has a great warranty. At the end of the day, that's the one I chose for my house with it being the best performing at the time because I'm a bit of a tech nerd. So this is a 25 year product guarantee and a 30 year performance warranty that's gone behind this panel. Now it gets the name monofacial because it has solar cells just on a single side. This is where that bad boy comes into the mix. Looks can be deceiving right with these. That looks the same as that. They literally look identical. That's because they're manufactured in a very similar way, but what you can't see is what's round the back. Let me just flip it round quickly. So now you can see the difference. So what you can see is this is a monofacial panel, as in it only has solar cells on one side. This is a bifacial model. Light can penetrate through the front sheet of the solar panel, and effectively you have cells that are on the back that can also generate electricity as well. Now these aren't suitable for all applications. It's really important to note that. A monofacial, if you put that in roof, will work brilliantly. But if I put a bifacial panel in roof, if you think about it, it's so close to the surface of the felt and battens that are underneath it, that the light physically can't get behind the solar panel in order to generate properly. A lighter tile is often gonna be significantly better for these types of panels. If I've got a very dark tile, a dark concrete tile, a slate tile, then actually a lot of the performance gains that's gained from these are largely lost. So this is only really suitable for ground mounted solar systems, on roof solar systems, where I can get plenty of light behind the actual solar panels themselves. Or sometimes vertical solar panels, which has become more popular. And we're doing our first vertical solar panel job really soon. So let's have a look at why we would maybe select one over the other. First of all, let's go through aesthetics of these two panels. On the roof, when they're actually fixed up in place, if I was an on roof, would you notice the difference? absolutely no difference at all. It's only when you turn around the back that you never look at that effectively you would notice any difference at all. The next thing is warranty. That has a 25 year product warranty. That has a 25 year product warranty. That has a 30 year performance warranty. That has a 30 year performance warranty. They're the same. The manufacturers themselves are very similar to each other by way of turnover, staff numbers, 
legacy, it's starting to get quite hard to choose. But this is where efficiency and performance changes. We have a 420 watt panel here, but this was upgraded and this was kind of the latest, greatest version when I did my January video. This was getting more towards a 445 watt range, much higher performance, slightly better efficiency in the process. And you got a little uptick in terms of generation from the bifacial aspect, even when you were on roof in terms of a spec. Now, let me come on to something that's really important to me as a person, which is the ethics that go behind the solar panels. Unfortunately, there is slavery in the solar panel supply chain. A lot of these big manufacturers have started to do something about them. So any panels, if you were ever to instruct us to do your work, any panels that we pick very specifically are either part of the Solar Stewardship Initiative, which is this one on the right, which is Jinko, or the ITS traceable model, which is this JA solar model that's in the middle. Essentially, the polysilicon ingots come from Mongolia instead of coming from certain parts of China that are known for some of their ethical dilemmas. Last but not least, value. Now at the time, these were way more expensive because these were the new kids on the block than those ones were. And I kind of went, well, I'm going in roof. I can't make the most of the bifacial model. So I'm going to select one of these panels here. But value now, there's only about 15 quid difference between that one and that one. At the time, it was 50, 60 pounds. It was a big difference, particularly if you're specking 12, 14, 16 solar panels, the cost of your job starts to run away with you if you're not careful. But now there's not much of a difference. So if you're on a, a budget and you're going on roof, I'd spend the extra 150 quid if I've got 10 panels and I'd be going for this one. Most of the time, if you negotiate hard, you'd probably get them for the same cost. Now, I know you're itching to kind of find out a little bit more about that panel that's so elusive, but I really want to give you a little bit more context behind these so that one makes a little bit more sense. God, they're a bit heavy. If you like all the effort I'm going to for this, make sure you like and subscribe. So first of all, when it comes to availability on these, these are largely very much available from the majority of wholesalers. But this one's been quite tricky for us to actually source because it uses a new type of technology. So I'm just going to introduce you now to the ACO 475 watt, which blows my mind how much wattage you can get in such a dense module. And that's got an all back contact. First of all, look at the aesthetics is what it means. But instead of them welding the front onto the polysilicon ingot that's at the back of them, they move it all the way to the back. So you can't see it. So aesthetically, when you look at it on a roof, particularly if you go in roof, it looks an absolute million dollars in comparison to these. I always thought these look really good. Bear in mind, I come from a time of where we had blue panels to start off with. Then we were given white back sheets, which were unbelievable. Then we had these. And when you look at them from afar, we went, wow, they really are black. But when you look at these now, they look so good in comparison. And they're not that much more expensive, but I'll come on to cost just in a second. Then we've got warranty. It's a 25 year product warranty and a 30 year performance warranty. Very similar. But this is where you need to get into the nitty gritty. Because the buzz bars round the back and the way in which these all back contacts are manufactured, they degrade much slower, which essentially means at the 30 year point, you're going to get way more generation still out of this one than you will do out of this one. If you're one of those people that goes into the granular information a bit like I do, you should always be asking for a copy of the data sheet and you can see how much these are degrading over a period of time and what that difference looks like. But there's a significant difference between the two. We then have to look at wattage. This 445 watts and this 475. Bear in mind, it was only six months ago that we were looking at 420s. That's a 55 watt difference, a whacking amount of performance in six months worth of difference. Now, I think this is one of those leaps that comes once every blue moon. From a technology perspective, there's only so many technological advances you can make with a solar panel. So I feel like the advances we'll now be getting are actually quite small and incremental rather than such a big jump. But it is great to see that within the industry. So this is where we've got to look at how efficiently this solar is being processed. Now, because the buzz bars on the back of these solar panels, they also have what's called a better temperature coefficient. So they can keep their temperature better for longer when performing against other models. So what that means is we go from 420 to 475 watts, but between the two, 
it's like a 20% performance gain. It's outstanding. So what does that mean and how would that look in the real world? Well, I appreciate 20% is quite speculative because in Scotland, for example, a panel will perform very different from a panel that's installed in Dubai or Cornwall, for example. But if we kind of take the middle of the UK and south facing panels, average pitch angle of say 30 degrees, something along those lines. If I put a 420 watt panel pegged against a 475 watt panel, what this looks like is 3,500 to 4,000 kilowatt hours and this panel being more like 4,000 kilowatt hours to 4,500, bearing in mind it is the same surface area. That's a big difference, 500 kilowatt hours in the year, roughly speaking. Now I'm obviously speaking in a very rounded way. In order to get the exact differences between the two, we would need to do a performance figures like we do for all the clients that come to us that have solar installed. We do an exact performance calculation and this can be done really easily. So we take your orientation away from south, your pitch angle of your roof, how many solar panels you're having, and of course the inverter and setup you're having will be important in this equation because it has to be able to process all of this energy. That all gets mulched together and effectively we will then give able to tell you the difference between what a now a budget previous high performance model looks like and the new kid on the block. Now for my own personal opinion, I always like future proofing any system I do because technology changes all the time. These are harder to source and get hold of. They are the new ACO, as I mentioned, 3S all back contact panels. But if I was doing it personally, even if it meant an extra week on top of my uh, installation for waiting time, I would always be putting the latest technology on my roof because you know as well as I do that there will be incremental performance gains that happen over the next 12, 18 months as they do with all technology. So you probably won't want to invest in the past. You probably want to be investing in the future. So we've got our Jinko 420 watt solar panel. I'll be honest with you, they're even phasing those out. They're now a 440. That's best for value. So if you've kind of on a little bit of a lower budget, you've got a bigger roof, no one can really see it, and you're just looking for the best possible performance, or if you're going in roof, then I would be selecting that. If you want kind of best value for money versus best performance and a bit of a, a halfway house, my recommendation would be this bifacial JA solar panel, still very good, performs very well. And it was only a couple of months ago that we were saying this was the best thing on the market effectively. And then we've got the all new ACO 475 watt 3S all back contact, all black panel. If you're looking for a premium finish and you're looking for the best performance and to invest and future-proof your system, I'll be going for that one. Now, if your use case, as I mentioned earlier on, is suitable for a bifacial model, then this also comes in the 3S Plus bifacial model. They're a little bit more expensive as it presently stands. And I don't know whether you could justify the use case on an on-roof and whether it's actually worth the additional capital outlay. But if you're watching this a little bit later on and we're getting into back end of 2025, early 2026, then just before you make your purchase, you just want to validate that because things are changing in this industry all the time. A quick recap on one of the panels that didn't get presented in this video today is the white back sheet monofacial panel. I'll be honest with you, they only make up for a very small proportion of the work we do. The commercial, the industrial sites where we're looking for mass scale. But I feel like if you're watching this video, it's probably because you care really about the performance and aesthetics that's going to be on your home or business property. So it's really important that I went through all the newer versions and I just wanted to let you know that I've discounted that one on purpose. Let us know in the comments what you're having installed. I'd love to hear about it. That's all from me. Thank you.